This morning on CBS 2 News, the Nampa Fire Department is taking longer to respond the struggle to keep up with our state's growing population. Plus, officials in Oregon are looking for a man accused of attempted murder. How they believe he's using social media to evade police and find new victims. Plus, funeral services for Tyree Nichols set for tomorrow. A look at the aftermath after the video of his traffic stop is released. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. And it is a cold one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. <laughs> uh, if you experienced, yeah, yesterday you were outside at all. Folks, very similar conditions expected once again mm. today. So again, if you're heading out the door this morning, make sure you're layering up. Doesn't matter what you look like as long as you are staying warm. This is a live look from atop the CBS 2 studios this morning. Yeah, it is looking clear out there, folks, but that in turn is what's helping us get even colder as this Arctic air continues to stream out of the northwest right now, just 14 degrees. We do have light winds out of the southeast at 10 miles an hour, so that is going to take us down feeling more like just one degree out there, folks. So again, as we head closer to these early morning hours and the coldest time of the morning, just make sure as you're heading out, you're keeping that in mind. Current temperatures right now, just nine degrees in CUNA, 14 for us here in Boise, 14 as well for Caldwell. McCall sitting at negative one right now without wind chill as well as Stanley at negative nine. So again, folks, another very frigid morning is expected, so make sure you have no exposed skin if you are going to be stepping out the doors this morning. Out, you're out the door forecast, speaking of which, by 9 a.m., 16 degrees. By the afternoon, we are going to get to highs in the mid to upper 20s. So again, a little bit warmer than what we experienced yesterday, folks, but it's not by much. Coming up, we'll talk more about what we can expect in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team long. And as we take a live look out there this Tuesday morning, everything looking nice and calm. As you can see, not much happening on your screen. And we're not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, in Nampa, the fire department says they're taking longer to respond to emergency calls. Compared to three years ago, it now takes an amplifier almost a minute longer for a unit to show up at an emergency. CBS 2's Michaela Illich explains why that may be the difference between life and death. As more people make their way to the Treasure Valley, Nampa Fire says this poses an issue for its department. Traffic's just gotten worse. Even running uh, code three with lights and sirens when you have this many cars on the road, it takes us longer to get there. Nampa Fire has seen response times to calls taking even longer. Last year, the department averaged seven minutes in 39 seconds. Is this a concern for you guys in terms of providing the care that you guys need to, yeah. to those individuals? It's definitely a concern because as soon as you uh, pass the six minute mark in, in a cardiac arrest type of situation, you're doing permanent damage. That number doesn't even include the time it takes for someone to talk to dispatch. We add on to that the dispatch time, which is anywhere from one to two minutes, kind of depends on time of day that that call comes in, what other calls are, are occurring at the time. And so we're just, worst case, say we're adding two minutes and all of a sudden that time is not 7.39, it's 9.39. The last time the department was able to achieve that six minute mark was around 2011, but the new fire station could help. We're opening station six in August of this year and uh, we hope that will have a positive impact on our response times or at least at bare minimum keep them from getting longer. The new fire station is on Roosevelt between Midland and Middleton, and the department will hire 12 more firefighters for that station. And Boise is getting a new fire station 5. Construction starts soon. This is what the new fire station 5 will look like. The city says the new state-of-the-art facility will better serve the community and improve the health and safety of firefighters. Construction should be completed in 2024. And in the meantime, Engine 5 will operate out of a location at 12th and Bannock, Ladder 5 will operate from Station 18, and the crew did run their last run from the old station yesterday. And Nampa police need your help finding a man with warrants totaling a half a million dollars. 29-year-old Christian Arellano of Meridian. In Nampa, police say he used to work for plumbing companies and preyed on seniors and customers who didn't speak or understand English. They say he would convince them to pay him extra for things he either didn't do or that they didn't need. 
Police say he did the same things in California and now plans to move to Utah. If you know where he is or you think he swindled you, go to our website to learn how to report him. And officials in Oregon are searching for an attempted murder suspect. Ben Foster is accused of torturing a woman he held captive. He was already convicted in Nevada of keeping another woman in captivity. Police say he's using dating apps to find new victims and find people to help him avoid getting arrested. He's a felon on the run. He doesn't want to go back to prison. He's probably willing to do anything to stay out of prison. Now they found Foster's car near one woman's home in the Wolf Creek area. They say canines helped track his scent, but they believe someone else helped him out of the area. The Grands Pass Police Department is offering $2,500 for any information leading to Foster's arrest and prosecution. And the family of Tyree Nichols and their lawyer expected to speak at an event later today in Memphis. It comes after new fallout from the brutal police beating of the 29 year old earlier this month. Memphis police now say two more officers are being disciplined following that encounter. And the city's fire department is firing three employees for their actions on the scene. Video shows Nichols was not given medical attention for several crucial minutes. He died three days later. Everybody's walking around nonchalantly like it's business as usual. So it should be accountability for everybody on the video. Funeral services for Nichols will be held tomorrow. At the funeral, civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. Four Biden administration officials are expected to attend as well. And next week, the Nichols family will attend the president's State of the Union address as guests of the Congressional Black Caucus. Biden says he will meet with the caucus to talk about police reform. The president says he believes the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is still the most reasonable legislation to enact. It passed in the House but stalled in the Senate. No date has been set for a meeting with congressional leaders. And turning now to coverage at the Capitol, here at the Idaho State House, a bill is trying to remove student IDs as a valid form of identification to vote. Under Representative Tina Lambert's bill, the only forms you could bring to the polls would be an Idaho driver's license or photo ID, a U.S. passport or other federal photo ID, a tribal photo ID, or a license to carry a concealed weapon issued by an Idaho county. It would also remove the option to sign an affidavit if a voter forgets to bring their ID to the polls. The bill needs a public hearing and vote in committee before it can move forward. Also at the State House, a bill that could punish cities that don't uphold state felonies advancing to the Senate floor. House Bill 22 passed the House floor 53 to 13. It states that if a local government entity, such as a police chief, mayor, or city council, does not investigate a felony, local sales and use tax would be withheld. The bill being met with both criticism and praise. Some saying it's directed at the city of Boise, which passed a resolution last summer saying it would not prioritize criminal investigations into abortions. The bill's sponsor representative, Bruce Skog, says this is not the case. Next, it's expected to get several readings in the Idaho Senate. And it's time to snuggle up with a cup of hot cocoa. That's because today is National Hot Chocolate Day. Humans have been drinking chocolate for a long time. The first chocolate beverage is believed to have been created over 2,000 years ago. So to celebrate, make some at home or stop by a coffee shop for a hot one. And of course, feel free to top it with whipped cream or marshmallows. Yeah, and you're definitely going to want something warm for your hands this morning. Yes. Yeah, those frigid conditions, yeah. they are here, folks. Luckily, not here to stay, but we're going to deal with them for the next couple mornings. Okay, but as long as they're not here to stay. Nope. It's... <laughs> cold out there. It's that, you know, weather where you kind of want to run. Oh yeah, definitely. Your, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be spending time, any <laughs> prolonged time outside folks. We know this. Make sure you're bundling up if you have to folks. Yeah. Let's take a live look outside right now. High temperatures for today. Some of our models saying Boise could get up to 36 degrees folks. Today we're expecting something in the upper 20s, but at least it's not as cold as our friends in Idaho Falls at just 17 degrees. As you can see, though Fargo up in North Dakota taking the cake with just 13 degrees for their daytime high. This is all because of this Arctic outbreak bringing strong and cold Arctic air out of the Northwest into our region. Again, that's why we're seeing temperatures below normal this morning, just 14 degrees in Boise, 12 in Nampa, Ontario sitting at 17. Mountain Home, you're sitting at 9 degrees. McCall at negative 1.
sun. We do have winds out of the southeast at about 10 miles an hour, so that is taking us down an additional 5 to 10 degrees for what our feels like temperature is, folks. So again, it is very cold out there, folks. Frigid temperatures today, especially if you're up in the mountains and have to be if you have to be outside at any point, just make sure you are bundling up. We are seeing more cloud cover today, so that will help with some insulation, hence why we're a little warmer today just by a few degrees than what we experienced yesterday. But like Ashley said, that gradual warm up is heading our way this week and we are looking at dry conditions continuing folks. We would like to see some more storm systems, but models showing at least the next you know, three to five days we are staying clear. So weather advisory, we have a winter weather advisory for our friends on the east side of the state and air stagnation advisory for us in the Treasure Valley through at least Friday at one o'clock. As you can see, it's southeastern Idaho as well as eastern Oregon. Again, inversion season. This is normal for this time of the year, folks, as we don't have any winds helping push out any of that pollution. So today's forecast again, it is going to be chilly, folks, not expecting to break that 30 degree mark with lots of cloud cover. But again, that warming trend up, up, up that roller coaster is isn't stopping as we head through winter, folks. The good news, though, we are starting to warm today, looking like the coldest day of the week so far. So again, folks, if you are heading out this morning, keep in mind winds about 10 miles an hour, so taking us down another 5 to 10 degrees. You just want to make sure that you are adding a jacket. You have your gloves, you have your hat, maybe even a scarf, and especially if you're getting your kids out the door in the morning, just make sure that they are prepared for these very cold temperatures. Yeah, the more bundled up the better this oh, yeah. morning. It doesn't matter what you look like, yeah. folks, as long as you're warm. You should see us walking <laughs> to the station in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Tuesday morning, as you can see, everything looking nice and calm. Not too many cars out there yet and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, winter weather striking Texas this morning, how it's impacting travel on the ground and in the air there this morning. Plus, we'll be seeing a few more weeks of winter or an early spring. A look ahead at Groundhog Day. And it's time now for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to one study, this is the number one pet peeve of dads. What is it? That answer was leaving the lights on. Now let's take a look at today's question. The average person does this for at least a half hour a day. What could it be? It's 514. Welcome back, folks. Today for our friends in Caldwell, we are looking at a high of 24 degrees, mostly cloudy skies overnight tonight, just 13 degrees as that cloud cover hangs on for your Wednesday with a high of 29 degrees. Thank you, Sarah. Well, Texas is, pre is preparing for winter weather. Freezing rain is creating dangerous conditions in some parts of the state. The National Weather Service has a winter storm warning in effect for a large part of Texas until Thursday morning. A spokesperson with the city of Austin says she wants drivers to keep safety top of mind as wintry conditions can lead to slick roads. Make sure that you're traveling at a reasonable rate of speed. This is not the time to go flying down the highway when there's ice over the road. Um, that's only going to cause trouble. Crews working overnight to get the roads ready for this morning. Of course, officials say if you can avoid traveling, it's best to just stay home. And the winter weather also impacting air travel. More than 1,600 flights are canceled because of winter storms. The Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport has the most cancellations right now. According to FlightAware, that includes more than 280 flights for people leaving from DFW and more than 260 cancellations for arrivals. Customers should check with their airline about their flight status before they head to the airport. And the winter weather comes just one week after Texas is hit by devastating tornadoes. The community in Deer Park still processing the destruction left behind. One local roller rink says it could have been worse. If it would have happened on a Saturday afternoon, it had been bad. It's a center block wall that was, I don't know, 14 foot tall and 180 feet long and it's gone. The owner of Skate World says the building was thankfully pretty empty when the tornado passed. Now work is underway to prepare the now destroyed building. And taking a look in Nevada now, cold temperatures making for icy commuting, condi commuting conditions. 
Drivers encountering snow piles and ice on the roads. In Reno, it's been the coldest it's been since 2013. Many Reno valleys are dropping below zero this morning, but it won't last for too long. Warmer weather is set to return there by the middle of the week with mid 40s for highs lasting into the weekend. And we'll soon find out whether or not we'll have a few more weeks of winter. Thursday is Groundhog Day. The town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania is gearing up for the big day as the famous Punxsutawney Phil gets ready to see his shadow. Douglas Braff gives us a look. It's almost Phil's time to shine, but it's also the time to shine for local businesses here in Punxsutawney. Well, we have 6,000 people that live here and it swells to 20 or 30,000 so that you can just imagine the impact that it has on our, our economy here. And this year the expectations are quite high. I feel everything's sold out. Um, the tickets are all, they're all sold out everywhere. The hotels are all booked around us. All in the hopes of showing off that small town charm. Just want everyone to come and see what a great little town we have and um, maybe someone will move here, start a business here. For this family that moved here in August, they tell me Punxsutawney's charm has been a whole new world. The kids go to school here now and um, we didn't move too far, only like 45 minutes, but Punxsutawney's different than other towns. <laughs> uh, we kind of like a groundhog a lot. And why move to Punxsutawney? Well, it's a story as old as time. Uh, an inner circle member. <laughs> you know, yeah. fell in love with somebody who wears a top hat on Groundhog Day and he kind of likes it, so I like it too. They say Punxsutawney has a lot of quirks, but also a strong civic bond. Because here everybody knows everybody in this town, <laughs> so somehow you're all connected and you're all just friends without even knowing it. And even if old Phil sees a shadow on Thursday, the town will be filled with warmth. I just want warm weather, but we still love them no matter what. I don't know about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Sarah is hoping that winter ends quickly. Yeah, I'm definitely not shy about that. There's no <laughs> doubt. But folks, the good news, it's looking like sunny skies for Groundhog's Day. So okay. we will see what Puxatani Phil has to say. Oh. Oh, yeah, Sarah will be anxiously <laughs> awaiting to see if spring will be here soon. Yeah, my fingers are crossed, guys, so we <laughs> will see. But for now, of course, we are in the dead of winter. Yeah, you can feel it if you're stepping outside. Starting off our day, folks, we are a few degrees warmer than what we were yesterday. But folks, it's just the teens. We are looking at just 14 degrees by 6 a.m. By 7 a.m., 15 degrees, and by 8 a.m., just 14 degrees. So again, it is going to be another chilly morning, folks, that we are seeing just a few degrees warming from yesterday. But a look outside this morning, we are seeing that high-level cloud cover continuing to stream in out of the northwest, taking that cold Arctic air into the inland northwest. So folks, temperatures today, again, looking in the teens across the Treasure Valley, nine degrees in Mountain Home, negative eight for our friends in Sun Valley, as well as negative nine in Stanley, negative one for our friends up in McCall. So your morning temperatures, they are going to be warming, but very slowly. So by 8 a.m., 15, by 9 a.m., 16, then by 11 a.m., we're getting into the 20s. Today highs, again, folks, only expected to reach the mid to upper 20s. So it is expected to be another very cold day. This Arctic air continuing to stream in out of the northwest. We can see it actually right here with this cloud deck up near the panhandle of Idaho, continuing to move into the region. That's what's continuing to keep us cold today, as well as streaming in that heavy cloud cover. But what we're seeing as far as storm systems, not much folks. That's because high pressure is continuing off the coast. And that in turn is what's helping block any storms that would move in and of course bring us some of that fresh snow. We'll talk a little more about snowpack as well coming up within the hour. So we're looking at northwesterly flow continuing to push through with that cloud cover. Again, Again, it's going to be very dense, that cloud deck. A chance of just a spotty snow shower over the afternoon. We'll see some clearing in that cloud cover into Wednesday, folks, as we see some warming. But of course, still not looking at any storm systems on the horizon, at least until the weekend. So 27 for your Tuesday, Wednesday, partly cloudy skies, 32 by Thursday, 36 degrees, Groundhog's Day. And then we finally start to see some warming, folks. And by that, we mean just getting back to near normal for this winter. Let's take a look for our friends up in the mountains because they are also experiencing those frigid conditions. Just 20 degrees for the high today. We are looking at teens for overnight lows, and then we're going to see some warming. Next Sunday is our chance for our next weather maker with some light snow showers. It's what it's looking like so far. But as far as this morning, we are looking clear, uh, just very cold. So keep that in mind yeah. and be prepared as you head out the door. Yeah, bundle 
bundle up, make sure cars, homes are all heated and oh, yeah. ready. Yep, yeah. make sure everyone's staying warm and check on others too to make sure that yes. they are also staying warm. Definitely, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, as you can see, everything's still looking nice and calm at 522 this Tuesday morning. Not hearing of anything that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News this morning, ending COVID emergency declarations when the White House say the pandemic here in the U.S. will end. Plus, the impact the pandemic has had on our kids, what one study says schools should do to make up for lost learning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's a global health emergency, but there is hope the pandemic may be reaching an inflection point where higher levels of immunity can lower virus-related deaths. The director of the World Health Organization says that in the coming year, the world could transition to a new phase in which hospitalizations and deaths are reduced to the lowest levels possible. This comes as the White House is planning to end two COVID-19 emergency declarations in May. The original actions taken by the Trump administration provided funds and resources to several federal agencies to help them deal with the pandemic. Ending the declarations will mean the government will begin treating the virus as an endemic that is here to stay. And despite enduring the COVID-19 pandemic, the world is not ready for future outbreaks. That's according to a 2022 World Disasters Report published by the International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent Societies. The IFRC is a humanitarian organization that provides support for global crises. The organization's report says much of the COVID-19 crisis's pandemic or impact on countries such as job loss and poverty, food insecurity, and increased mental health issues could have been avoided. They add governments on federal, state, and local levels could have been more prepared for such an event and should do more to address the shortfalls. Well, a new study suggests school-aged children worldwide lost out on more than a third of a year's worth of learning when COVID-19 caused schools to close. Researchers looked at data from 42 studies on learning progress during the pandemic in 15 different countries. The author says students have still not recovered from the setbacks and suggests that school districts take steps to add tutoring and learning times, such as summer programs or longer school years in an effort to get them back on track. Coming up on CBS2 News, a Meridian man with warrants totaling a half a million dollars who police want you to be out on the lookout for. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. Of course, after three hours of FBI, you can join us right back here for CBS2 News at 10 p.m. And here's our question of the day. The average person does this for at least a half hour a day. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Nampa Fire Department is taking longer to respond to the struggle to keep up with our state's growing population. Plus, officials in Oregon are looking for a man accused of attempted murder, how they believe he's using social media to evade police and find new victims. Plus, funeral services for Tyree Nichols set for tomorrow. A look at the aftermath after the video of his traffic stop is released. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thanks for waking up with CBS 2 News This Morning. Right now we're sitting at just 14 degrees in downtown Boise. Winds out of the southeast at 10 miles an hour. That's taking us down to feeling just like one degree outside, folks. We are a few degrees warmer than yesterday morning, but it is still frigid across the region. This is a look at the upper Treasure Valley as well as the lower Treasure Valley, folks. Again, teens, nine degrees for our friends in CUNA this morning, taking a wider look to southeastern Idaho and portions of eastern Oregon. Negative nine in Stanley, negative one in McCall. 
14 for us in Caldwell as well as Boise, 12 degrees in Nampa. So as you're heading out the door this morning, make sure you're grabbing those mittens, a hat, a jacket, as well as a scarf. It is very cold, folks. Mostly cloudy skies are expected today by 9 a.m. 16 degrees at 11 a.m. 21 degrees. Our daytime highs today only getting into the mid to upper 20s across the Treasure Valley. So again, another very cold day is expected. That cloud cover will help insulate us just slightly. But again, high temperatures only in the upper 20s. We're looking at low 20s across our mountains, those upper level mountains. We're not looking at any precipitation heading our way, folks, but coming up, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well as our snowpack. A little update for you coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And at 531 this Tuesday morning, as you can see, everything running along nice and smooth. Not hearing of any delays, incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you get in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Lenampa, the fire department says they're taking longer to respond to emergency calls. Compared to three years ago, it now takes Nampa Fire almost a minute longer for a unit to show up at an emergency. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains why that may be the difference between life and death. As more people make their way to the Treasure Valley, Nampa Fire says this poses an issue for its department. Traffic's just gotten worse. Even running uh, code three with lights and sirens when you have this many cars on the road, it takes us longer to get there. Nampa Fire has seen response times to calls taking even longer. Last year, the department averaged seven minutes in 39 seconds. Is this a concern for you guys in terms of providing the care that you guys need to, yeah. to those individuals? It's definitely a concern because as soon as you uh, pass the six minute mark in, in a cardiac arrest type of situation, you're doing permanent damage. That number doesn't even include the time it takes for someone to talk to dispatch. We add on to that the dispatch time, which is anywhere from one to two minutes. Kind of depends on time of day that that call comes in, what other calls are, are occurring at the time. And so we're just, worst case, say we're adding two minutes and all of a sudden that time is not 7.39, it's 9.39. The last time the department was able to achieve that six minute mark was around 2011 but the new fire station could help. We're opening station six in August of this year, and uh, we hope that will have a positive impact on our response times, or at least at bare minimum, keep them from getting longer. The new fire station is on Roosevelt between Midland and Middleton, and the fire department will hire 12 more firefighters for it. And Boise is getting a new fire station five. Construction starts soon. This is what the new fire station five will look like. The city says the new state of the art facility will better serve the community and improve health and safety of firefighters. Construction should be complete in 2024. Now, in the meantime, engine five will operate out of a location at 12th and Bannock. Ladder five will operate from station 18. The crew did their last run from the old station yesterday. And Nampa police need your help finding a man with warrants totaling a half a million dollars. 29 year old Christian Arellano of Meridian. Now in Nampa, police say he used to work for plumbing companies and he would prey on seniors and customers who didn't speak or understand English. They say he would convince them to pay him extra for things he didn't do or that they didn't need. Police say he did the same things in California and now plans to move to Utah. If you know where he is or you think he swindled you, go to our website to learn how to report him. And officials in Oregon searching for an attempted murder suspect. Ben Foster is accused of torturing a woman he held captive. He was already convicted in Nevada of keeping another woman in captivity. Police say he's using dating apps to find new victims and help people and find people to help him avoid getting arrested. He's a felon on the run. He doesn't want to go back to prison. He's probably willing to do anything to stay out of prison. They found Foster's car near one woman's house in the Wolf Creek area. They say canines helped track his scent, but they believe someone else helped him out of the area. The Grants Pass Police Department is offering $2,500 for any information leading to Foster's arrest and prosecution. And turning now to developing news, the family of Tyree Nichols and their lawyer expected to speak at an event later today in Memphis. It comes after new fallout from the brutal police beating of the 29 year old earlier this month. Memphis police now say two more officers are being disciplined following that encounter and the city's fire department is firing three employees for their actions on the scene. 
Video shows Nichols wasn't given medical attention for several crucial minutes. He then died three days later. Everybody's walking around nonchalantly like it's business as usual. So it should be accountability for everybody on the video. Funeral services will be held for Nichols tomorrow. At the funeral, civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. Four Biden administration officials are expected to attend as well. And next week, Nichols' family will attend the President's State of the Union address as guests of the Congressional Black Caucus. Biden says he will meet with the caucus to talk about police reform. The president says he believes the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is still the most reasonable legislation to enact. It passed in the House but stalled in the Senate. No date has been set for a meeting with congressional leaders. And turning now to coverage at the Capitol, here at the Idaho State House, a bill is trying to remove student IDs as a valid form of identification to vote. Under Representative Tina Lambert's bill, the only forms you could bring to the polls would be an Idaho driver's license or photo ID, a U.S. passport or other federal photo ID, a tribal photo ID, or a license to carry a concealed weapon issued by an Idaho county. It would also remove the option to sign an affidavit if a voter forgets to bring their ID to the polls. The bill needs a public hearing and vote in committee before it can move forward. And also at the State House, a bill that could punish cities that don't uphold state felonies advancing to the Senate floor. House Bill 22 passed the House floor 53 to 13. It states that if a local government entity, such as a police chief, mayor, or city council, does not investigate a felony, felony local sales and use tax could be withheld. The bill being met with both criticism and praise, some saying it's directed at the city of Boise, which passed a resolution last summer saying it would not prioritize criminal investigations into abortions. The bill's sponsor, Representative Bruce Skog, says this is not the case. Next, it's expected to get several readings in the Idaho Senate. And it's time, it's time to snuggle up with a cup of cocoa. That's because today is National Hot Chocolate Day. Humans have been drinking chocolate for a long time. The first chocolate beverage is believed to have been created over 2,000 years ago. So to celebrate, make some at home, or you can stop by a coffee shop for a hot cup. And of course, feel free to top it with whipped cream or marshmallows. Oh, that does sound good. Yeah, especially when you step outside and you feel just how cold it is out there. Yeah, maybe something if going out the door to keep your little hands warm. Or, yeah. Yeah, as some of the kids like to call them your phalanges. Some fun <laughs> facts for the morning. But let's talk about the weather because it is cold out there, folks. Frigid conditions, though it is a few degrees warmer than what we experienced yesterday, if you can believe it. But right now we are in the teens across the Treasure Valley. 17 for our friends in Ontario. 9 degrees in Mountain Home. Negative 1 for our friends up in McCall. As far as our next weather maker, folks, we are seeing high pressure off of the Pacific that is keeping us dry, but it is also what's causing us to see some of these frigid temperatures as Arctic air continues to spill over this high pressure. Mostly cloudy skies are expected throughout the day. That's going to help us with some insulation in turn why we're seeing just a few degrees warmer conditions than we did yesterday. We do have winds out of the southeast though, folks, so it is still chilly. We do have a gradual warm up this week back to near normal with those dry conditions holding on folks. So our weather advisory is in effect. We do have an air stagnation advisory through Friday at 1 o'clock as we see our inversion continuing to build during that time. That's because we have no meaningful wind gusts or any storm systems to help push out some of this air that's settled into our coldest and lowest valleys. A winter weather advisory through Thursday at 11 for our friends on the eastern side of the state. So this morning we will be warming, but very slowly by 9 a.m. 16 degrees, 10 a.m. 18 degrees. Then we get into the 20s, folks, though we are looking at mostly cloudy skies once again. But this roller coaster isn't stopping folks. We are looking at this upward slide 29 on Tuesday, 34 on Wednesday, 40 on Thursday, 41 on Friday, and then by Saturday sitting at 44 degrees, finally getting above average. And folks, as far as our snowpack, we do see high pressure off the coast that blocks any storm systems that would move in. This is our percent of normal for this time of the year, folks. We normally want to be above 100%. We're getting a little closer to that 100% mark. So we do want to see more storm systems moving in. We need a little bit more snow on that snowpack. But right now we're just getting the cold air. Yeah, not, not <laughs> as fun as helping the snowpack. It's just just cold. I know. Wish for some snow, folks. <laughs> We're hoping to see more on the horizon. We'll talk more about that coming up. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. 
And as we take a live look out there at 540 this Tuesday morning, gradually starting to see some more cars. But as you can see, everything moving along smoothly on your screen. Not hearing of any delays, incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. Well, it's time now for our question of the day. Today's question is the average person does this for at least a half hour a day. Oh, we've been struggling with this one this morning, folks. Uh, I was thinking eating, like if you add up all of your meals during the day. Yeah, I like that one. Ooh, I know I'm struggling That's... this morning. What do you think, Ashley? My best guess as of right now, maybe cleaning up after yourself. Oh, I like you that. Know, as you're cooking, cleaning up after you get ready, clean. I enjoy the average person doing that cooking and the cleaning. See, I don't like the cleaning portion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lacey says cooking dinner, cooks dinner. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, it takes some time. Yeah. Especially if you're me. All right, Kathy <laughs> says driving or drives. Your that commute, was, possibly? Yeah, that was one that crossed my mind this morning. Maybe if you add up yeah. your commutes through the day. Yeah, you know, even that little, the little five-minute drive can yeah. add up over time. Steven says sitting in the bathroom. <laughs> Thank you, Steven, for keeping that PG. We appreciate it this morning. But yeah, I'm going to say that, that, yeah, potentially would make sense. Yeah, if you add up throughout the day, 30 minutes. Again, folks, if you think you know the answer, yeah, share your guesses on our Facebook page or our Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, the future of the global economy may be doing better than expected. How much global growth is expected to fall? It is 544 folks. Happy Tuesday for our friends in Mountain Home today. A high of just 25 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. That cloud cover going to hang on tonight, just 15 degrees. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with a high of 33 degrees. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the International Monetary Fund's latest report calls for a slight slowdown in global growth this year. However, the rate of decline forecast isn't as steep as some economists previously forecasted. John Lawrence reports. The International Monetary Fund says global growth will drop from 3.4% last year to 2.9% in 2023. This is the first time in quite a while that we've had sort of good news in that, in that sense. Although the rate is expected to fall half a percent, it's still higher than the 2.7% that was forecast in October. The IMF says China and India will provide the biggest boost for worldwide growth, while the U.S.'s rate of development is forecast to be 1.4 percent. This is not recession territory. I mean, actually, the labor market is doing very, very strongly right now. And while we're on the subject of the U.S. economy... Congress has gone for decades, both parties, on a spending spree. If the economy is as strong as President Biden claims, then now's the time to try to tighten the belt. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is scheduled to meet with President Joe Biden on Wednesday to address the U.S. reaching its $31.4 trillion debt limit. This comes after two dozen Senate Republicans sent a letter to Biden saying they won't back a debt ceiling increase without at least equal spending reductions imposed. The president's message for McCarthy and the GOP? Show me your budget, I'll show you mine. I'm John Lawrence reporting. On Sunday, Speaker McCarthy told CBS that as far as cuts to Medicare and Social Security, he wanted to, quote, take those off the table. And an important consumer alert this morning, the Rhode Island-based sausage company Danielle International recalling nearly 53,000 pounds of ready-to-eat products. They say they may be contaminated with listeria. They, the recalled meats sold nationwide include salami and pepperoni, sold under several brand names as charcuterie platters, so far, no one has reported getting sick. All right, let's switch gears. Talk weather, folks, because, yeah, another frigid morning is here. Yeah, definitely one of those mornings where you bundle up, but you're still running from your house to your car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're running as fast as you can. Yeah, you are definitely feeling those temperatures out there this morning, folks. And you want to make sure, yeah, as Ashley said, bundle it on up. It does not matter what you look like. 
No judgment out there this morning. We are just trying to keep warm, folks. So let's kick off your day with your frosted weather wheats because we are in the teens as we're kicking off our morning. 14 degrees at 6 a.m., 15 at 7 a.m., 14 at 8 a.m. as we get to the coldest temperatures of the morning. But a look outside right now. We are seeing high level clouds continuing to stream out of the northwest, bringing that cold Arctic air with it, folks. Though we aren't seeing any precipitation, no storm systems, at least on the horizon until the weekend. So temperatures right now. We are seeing the teens across the Treasure Valley, 9 degrees in Mountain Home, negative 1 in McCall, negative 9 in Stanley, and negative 4 for our friends over in Sun Valley. So as far as your morning temperatures, we are warming, but slowly by 8 a.m., 15 degrees, by 9 a.m., 16, by 10 a.m., 18 degrees, and then we're getting into our the mid-20s for at least your afternoon, expecting daytime highs in the mid to upper 20s, folks. So a few degrees warmer than what we experienced yesterday, but not by much. You want to make sure that you are preparing for these winter temperatures. That's because this cloud cover, you can see this cloud deck actually pretty well right here. It's continuing to stream in to the Great Basin. That's what's keeping us cold today. But high pressure out on the Pacific is what's continuing to keep any storm systems that would move in at bay. You can see some of that cloud cover streaming over just the top of that high pressure system. Again, why we're seeing mostly cloudy skies for the day today. But as far as our future cast, we are going to continue to see cloud cover streaming in out of the northwest. A chance of a few spotty showers up in McCall. But other than that, we are looking like that cloud cover will continue into the latter half of your work week. No storm until at least the weekend. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast. Groundhog Day coming up quick, folks. We are looking at 27 for the high as we begin to warm heading into the weekend. Our next storm system, a chance on Sunday. Let's take a peek for our friends in the mountains as well. Highs today only 20 degrees overnight lows in the teens and we are looking at our next storm system on Sunday as well. So definitely not seeing our snowpack continuing to be bolstered. That's really what we want to see this time of the year, folks. But as far as your commute this morning, it is looking clear, but very cold. Yes, definitely bundle up maybe two, three layers because yes. single digits this morning. Yeah, we don't want any exposed skin, folks. We want to keep you warm. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 550 this morning, as you can see, even as we're gradually starting to see some more headlights, traffic moving along smoothly, not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So a nice, easy start to your Tuesday morning. And when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, sustainable travel, how the industry is making sure they're taking care of the environment. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Well, sustainability is a hot topic right now in the travel world. Protecting the environment is the most common way people associate it with the industry. But as CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from Los Cabos, Mexico, sustainability ex extends to many other areas. A drone helps snorkel tour leaders in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico spot schools of fish from above. In Cabo Pulmo National Park, 60 miles north of Los Cabos, sea lions and other marine life abound. Thanks to a ban on fishing and additional protections instituted almost three decades ago when almost all of the fish had disappeared. It is full of life. The fish found it and it is really the place that is representing what Jacques Cousteau once called the entire Sea of Cortez, the aquarium of the world. Many in the Los Cabos area are fixated on protecting the environment in and out of the water. In front of Gran Velas Resort, a beach cleaner and employees routinely sweep the sand, removing debris. When you walk on a beach in Los Cabos, you see a clear blue color on the ocean and clean brown sand. That's how we want to keep it. We stayed at Gran Velas and Hotel El Gonzo for special rates where art residencies 
and a community center are part of the sustainability initiatives. I think it's not just a matter of giving back to the communities, it's a matter of giving back something to the world. Sustainability is so important here. The Los Cabos Tourism Board has devised 10 rules for responsible tourists, including shopping at local businesses and not bargaining with owners. When you are making a sustainable impact in the community, you are helping to advance in the quality of life that everyone has. Laurence Jobage recently visited Los Cabos with her family from Lexington, Kentucky. I've seen actually in the shops in Cabos, they just give like paper bags, which was quite interesting. A new survey from Expedia finds 90% of consumers are now looking for sustainable options when traveling. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Los Cabos, Mexico. A few other sustainability rules for tourists include managing your waste, learning to protect and respecting the community's customs, and taking photos rather than removing anything from its natural environment. And a new hazard for first responders out on the road, electric vehicle fires can be extremely difficult to put out. Sacramento Metro firefighters say gas-powered vehicles can usually be extingu extinguished with the 700 gallons of water carried by a single fire engine, but electric vehicles use lithium-ion batteries that take a lot more effort. It's not just put water on it, put it out, and go home. There's still stranded energy in those batteries, and we risk electrocution. Metro Fire in California say they have responded to three Tesla fires so far. The first was in an auto wrecking yard where crews dug a trench and submerged the car in water to extinguish the blaze. Firefighters say there's no standard response for this type of emergency, so they're learning something new each time. And taking a quick look at gas prices here in the Gem State, Idaho's average is actually below the national average for the first time in months. Right now, we're sitting at $3.49 a gallon, just a couple cents under the national average at $3.51. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up is going to be either Costco or Albertsons locations right here in Boise. They're $3.29 a gallon there. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a Meridian man with warrants totaling half a million dollars who police want you to be out on the lookout for. Plus, will we be seeing a few more weeks of winter or an early spring? A look ahead at Groundhog Day. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with all of your top stories at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Nampa Fire Department is taking longer to respond the struggle to keep up with our state's growing population. Plus, officials in Oregon looking for a man accused of attempted murder. How they believe he's using social media to evade police and find new victims. And funeral services for Tyree Nichols set for tomorrow. A look at the aftermath after the video of his tragic traffic stop is released. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. I'm Ashley Carter. And I'm Sarah Jacobson. Yeah, we are saying sayonara to January and looking at some frigid temperatures to kick off your morning as well. Yeah, yeah Mother Nature maybe not quite getting <laughs> it just yet, but we are a little below normal, folks, but this is very normal for this time of the mm -hmm. year, of course. But it is very cold, so we want you to prepare as you're heading out the door this morning. We are looking at high-level cloud cover continuing to stream in out of the northwest as well as those frigid temperatures. We are sitting at just 14 degrees 
Breeze in Boise, 13 miles an hour winds out of the east and southeast, feeling like zero degrees as you kick off your morning. So again, as we said earlier, make sure you are bundling on up jackets, gloves, a hat, as well as a scarf, folks. Want to make sure everyone is staying warm. Um, as far as current temperatures, we are in the teens across the Treasure Valley, just nine degrees for our friends down in CUNA this morning. A little further look out, 18 degrees in Ontario, just 10 in Mountain Home, negative four up in McCall and negative eight for our friends in Stanley. So as you're heading out the door this morning, again, you don't want to forget that jacket, your hat or your gloves. We're looking at 9 a.m. 16 degrees by 11 a.m. 21 degrees today. Highs only getting into the mid to upper 20s. That cloud cover, though, helping us with some insulation. So a few degrees warmer than what we experienced just yesterday. High temperatures, like I said, in the upper 20s, some areas hitting 30 degrees. Our mountains looking at low 20s, upper teens for the highs today. As far as your forecast today, it is going to continue to be cold with that cloud cover. We'll talk more about what we can expect for the latter half of your work week coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long and taking a live look out there. As you can see, traffic gradually starting to pick up, but everything moving along. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down this Tuesday morning. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Lynn Nampa, the fire department, says they're taking longer to respond to emergency calls. Compared to three years ago, it now takes Nampa Fire almost a minute longer for a unit to show up at an emergency. CBS 2's Mikhail Elich explains why that may be the difference between life and death. As more people make their way to the Treasure Valley, Nampa Fire says this poses an issue for its department. Traffic's just gotten worse. Even running uh, code three with lights and sirens when you have this many cars on the road, it takes us longer to get there. Nampa Fire has seen response times to calls taking even longer. Last year, the department averaged seven minutes in 39 seconds. Is this a concern for you guys in terms of providing the care that you guys need to, yeah. to those individuals? It's definitely a concern because as soon as you uh, pass the six minute mark in, in a cardiac arrest type of situation, you're doing permanent damage. That number doesn't even include the time it takes for someone to talk to dispatch. We add on to that the dispatch time, which is anywhere from one to two minutes, kind of depends on time of day that that call comes in, what other calls are, are occurring at the time. And so we're just, worst case, say we're adding two minutes and all of a sudden that time is not 7.39, it's 9.39. The last time the department was able to achieve that six minute mark was around 2011 but the new fire station could help. We're opening station six in August of this year, and uh, we hope that will have a positive impact on our response times, or at least at bare minimum, keep them from getting longer. And that new fire station is on Roosevelt between Midland and Middleton, and the department will hire 12 more firefighters for that station. And Boise getting a new fire station five, construction starts soon. This is what the new fire station five will look like. The city says the new state-of-the-art facility will better serve the community and improve the health and safety of firefighters. Construction should be complete in 2024. Now, in the meantime, Engine 5 will operate out of a location at 12th and Bannock, and Ladder 5 will operate from Station 18. Nampa police need your help finding a man with warrants totaling a half a million dollars. 29-year-old Christian Arellano of Meridian now, in Nampa, police say he used to work for plumbing companies and preyed on seniors and customers who didn't speak or understand English. They say he would convince them to pay extra for things he either didn't do or that they didn't even need. Police think he did the same things in California and now plans to move to Utah. If you know where he is or where you or you think he swindled you, you can go to our website to learn how to report him. And officials in Oregon searching for an attempted murder suspect. Ben Foster, the man on your screen, is accused of torturing a woman he held captive. He was already convicted in Nevada of keeping another woman in captivity. Police say he's using dating apps to find new victims and help find people to help him avoid getting arrested. He's a felon on the run. He doesn't want to go back to prison. He's probably willing to do anything to stay out of prison. Now they found Foster's car near one woman's house in the Wolf Creek area. And they say canines helped track his scent, but they believe that someone else helped him out of the area. The Grants Pass Police Department is offering a $2,500 reward for any information leading to Foster's arrest and prosecution. 
And turning now to developing news, the family of Tyree Nichols and their lawyer expected to speak at an event later today in Memphis. This comes after new fallout from the brutal police beating the 29-year-old earlier this month. Memphis police now say two more officers are being disciplined following that encounter, and the city's fire department is firing three employees for their actions on the scene. Video shows Nichols was not given medical attention for several crucial minutes. He then died three days later. Everybody's walking around nonchalantly like it's business as usual, so it should be accountability for everybody on the video. Funeral services will be held for Nichols tomorrow. At the funeral, civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. Four Biden administration officials are expected to attend as well. And next week, Nichols' family will attend the President's State of the Union address as guests of the Congressional Black Caucus. Biden says he will meet with the caucus to talk about police reform. The president says he believes the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is still the most reasonable legislation to enact. It passed in the House but stalled in the Senate. No date has been set for a meeting with congressional leaders. And turning now to coverage at the Capitol, here at the Idaho State House, a bill is trying to remove student ID as a valid form of identification to vote. Under Representative Tina Lambert's bill, the only forms you could bring to the polls would be an Idaho driver's license or photo ID, a U.S. passport or other federal photo ID, a tribal photo ID, or a license to carry a concealed weapon issued by an Idaho county. It would also remove the option to sign an affidavit if a voter forgets to bring their ID to the polls. The bill needs a public hearing and vote in committee before it can move forward. And also at the State House, a bill that could punish cities that don't uphold state felonies advancing to the Senate floor. House Bill 22 passed the House floor 53 to 13. It states if a local government entity, such as a police chief, mayor, or city council, does not investigate a felony, local sales and use tax could be withheld. The bill being met with both criticism and praise. Some saying it's directed at the city of Boise, which passed a resolution last summer saying it would not prioritize criminal investigations into abortions. The bill's sponsor, Representative Bruce Skog, says this is not the case. Next, it's expected to get several readings in the Idaho Senate. And it's time to snuggle up with a cup of cocoa. That's because today is National Hot Chocolate Day. Humans have been drinking chocolate for a long time. In fact, the first chocolate beverage is believed to have been created over 2,000 years ago. So to celebrate, make some at home or you can stop by a coffee shop for a hot cup. And of course, feel free to top it with whipped cream or marshmallows. Yeah, that does look warm and you're definitely going to need something warm as you're heading out the door. Yes, like you've mentioned, something to just hold in your hands and Keep your hands warm. Exactly. You got to keep warm. That's the name of the game today, folks. Mm -hmm. We are a few degrees warmer than yesterday, but okay. still waking up in the teens. So yesterday, single digits. Today, folks, at least getting to the teens. We'll take that, I suppose, as a win. We're looking at temperatures right now across the region. Again, teens for the Treasure Valley. We are at 18 degrees in Ontario, 9 degrees in Mountain Home, negative 4 for our friends up in McCall. We do have winds out of the southeast that are continuing to um, take down those temperatures just by about 5 degrees. So again, if you are heading outside at any point today, keep in mind it is going to be frigid throughout the day. We are going to see a little more cloud cover than we did yesterday. That's going to help with some insulation. Again, Again, a few degrees warmer. That gradual warming will continue for your work week. So some good news there as we begin to finally thaw out. But those dry conditions only continuing, folks, as high pressure stays stagnant off the coast. So as far as our weather advisories, air stagnation is it set through Friday at 1 o'clock for us in the eastern Oregon as well as southwestern Idaho area. Of course, this is the time for inversion season as our cold, dense air settles into those lower valleys. Of course, we are going to continue to see that through Friday as winds move in for your Saturday. But as far as today, we are going to be warming just slightly 16 degrees at 9 a.m. By 10 a.m., 18 degrees. Then we get into the low 20s. Today, highs only reaching the middle to upper 20s for your high today. But this roller coaster not ending yet. Yet, folks, we are going up, up. So 29 Tuesday, 34 Wednesday, 40 on Thursday, Friday, 41. And then by Saturday, finally getting above average at 44 degrees, folks. As far as um, your forecast over the next week or so, we are staying dry, folks. So we are more than halfway through winter. There's the good news there. But we do need some more storm systems to move in and help bolster, of course, our snowpack. We'll be talking more about that coming up in just a few minutes. 
and excited to see that gradual increase through this week. Yes, slowly but surely we are inching <laughs> our way higher. So as far as this morning, folks, it is looking clear, but it is cold out there. Yep, definitely want to bundle up. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Tuesday morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update on our road conditions. Looking good, as is usually the case this time of the morning. Don't start off uh, this morning with any uh, major issues going. It is very quiet, light traffic pretty much all the way around. Driving conditions just fine, much like yesterday. Other than the uh, cold starts, uh, good to go all the way around. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, winter weather striking Texas, how it's impacting travel both on the ground and in the air. Plus, will we be seeing a few more weeks of winter or will we see an early spring? A look ahead at Groundhog Day. And of course, it's time now for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to one study, this is the number one pet peeve of dads. A lot of great guesses, but the answer was leaving the lights on. Now let's take a look at today's question. The average person does this for at least a half hour a day. What is it? It's 615. Welcome back. Caldwell today, a high of 24 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. That cloud cover hanging on tonight. Overnight lows 13 degrees. It's going to be cloudy tomorrow as well with a high of 29 degrees. Thank you, Sarah. Well, Texas is preparing for winter weather. Freezing rain is creating dangerous conditions in some parts of the state. The National Weather Service has a winter storm warning in effect for a large part of Texas until Thursday morning. A spokesperson with the city of Austin says she wants drivers to keep safety top of mind as we're in wintry conditions can lead to slick roads. Make sure that you're traveling at a reasonable rate of speed. This is not the time to go flying down the highway when there's ice over the road. Um, that's only going to cause trouble. Crews working overnight to get the roads ready for this morning. And of course, officials say if you can avoid traveling, it's best to just stay home. And the winter weather also impacting air travel. More than 1,600 flights are canceled because of winter storms. The Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport has the most cancellations right now. According to FlightAware, that includes more than 280 flights for people leaving from Dallas-Fort Worth and more than 260 cancellations for arrivals. Customers should check with their airline about their flight status before they head to the airport. And the winter weather comes just one week after Texas is hit by devastating tornadoes. The community in Deer Park still processing the destruction left behind. One local roller rink says there could have been much more, much worse. If it would have happened on a Saturday afternoon, it'd have been bad. It's a cinder block wall that was, I don't know, 14 foot tall and 180 feet long and is gone. The owner of Skate World says the building was thankfully pretty empty when the tornado passed. Now work is underway to prepare the now destroyed building. And we'll soon find out whether or not we'll have a few more weeks of winter. Thursday is Groundhog Day. The town of Punks Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania is gearing up for the big day as the famous Punxsutawney Phil gets ready to see his shadow. Douglas Braff gives us a look. It's almost Phil's time to shine, but it's also the time to shine for local businesses here in Punxsutawney. Well, we have 6,000 people that live here and it swells to 20 or 30,000 so that you can just imagine the impact that it has on our, our economy here. And this year the expectations are quite high. I feel everything's sold out. Um, the tickets are all, they're all sold out everywhere. The hotels are all booked around us. All in the hopes of showing off that small town charm. Just want everyone to come and see what a great little town we have and um, maybe someone will move here, start a business here. For this family that moved here in August, they tell me Punxsutawney's charm has been a whole new world. The kids go to school here now and uh, we didn't move too far, only by 45 minutes, but Punxsie's different than other towns. <laughs> uh, we kind of like a groundhog a lot. And why move to Punxsutawney? Well, it's a story as old as time. Uh, an inner circle member. <laughs> you know, 
fell in love with somebody who wears a top hat on Groundhog Day, and he kind of likes it, so I like it too. They say Punxsutawney has a lot of quirks, but also a strong civic bond. Because here, everybody knows everybody in this town, so somehow <laughs> you're all connected and you're all just friends without even knowing it. And even if old Phil sees a shadow on Thursday, the town will be filled with warmth. I just want warm weather, but we still love them no matter what. Uh, and with... <laughs> Sorry, flying in here, folks. Sorry, checking some extra models out there this morning. And it's looking very cold. Yeah. yeah. Sitting in the teens right now, folks. Only getting to the mid to upper 20s once again today. But the good news, that's a few degrees uh, warmer than yeah. what it was yesterday, <laughs> Ashley. So the good news, we are going to continue to warm slowly but surely. Let's start off your day with your frosted weather wheats because those teens hanging on for the coldest parts of our morning by 6 a.m. 14 degrees by 7 a.m. 16 degrees and by 8 a.m. looking at 15 degrees. Partly cloudy skies out there as we are seeing some high level clouds continuing to stream in, but it is deceivingly cold out there, folks. Very similar to what we experienced yesterday. Temperatures right now in the teens for the Treasure Valley. We are in the negatives, negative eight in Stanley, negative four for our friends in McCall. 9 degrees for our friends in Mountain Home. And keep in mind, we do have wind moving through that's taking us down a good 5 to 10 degrees. So again, this isn't even feels like temperature. It's feeling closer to about 10 degrees in Boise. So our morning temperature slowly but surely will be warming by 8 a.m. 15 degrees by 9 a.m. 16, getting into the low 20s by the time we hit noon. But today highs only getting to the mid to upper 20s, folks. So again, it is going to be a cold winter day. We have just 48 days until we officially hit spring. So folks, we're getting there. We just got to hold on and get through some of the coldest parts. So we are going to continue to see this cloud deck moving in um, out of the northwest. That's what's keeping us nice and cold with that Arctic air off the Pacific, though. High pressure is over the region. That's what's blocking any storms that would move into our region. And that's what we really need to be seeing right now, folks. Our snowpack continuing to dwindle, though we are still above average for our snowpack this time of the year. That's the good news. But as far as today, we are going to continue to see high level clouds streaming in with mostly cloudy skies, a chance of a light snow shower for our friends in the McCall area. No accumulations expected, but that cloud cover is only going to hang on. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast for you today. Highs 27 degrees overnight lows will be in the teens for the next couple of days, so still going to stay cold, folks. We are going to see some sunshine for Groundhog's Day and then our next storm system potentially on Sunday. Our friends up in the mountains looking at that same pattern. It's going to continue to stay cold, some sunshine for Groundhog's Day and then that next weather maker coming in for us on Sunday. Excited to see those 40s back on the board after the last couple days. Definitely. We'll see if we can keep them there, but for now, at least we are seeing that slow warming trend. Yes, good to see you. Thank you, Sarah. You. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update this morning. Still doing great. It's a very quiet start. Speed's decent. It's 84. Yet to get uh, much of any buildup going, even through Meridian. That may begin to change up here before much longer. If you're getting ready to get out the door, we usually get a little rush between uh, this time of the morning and 7 and then 7 o'clock hours when it uh, really busies up. Closure as of yesterday, in case you missed it. Franklin Boulevard in the Nampa stretch closed between Cherry Lane and Eustick for a while. Construction going on there. That's the uh, latest closure in that area. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, ending COVID emergency declarations when the White House say the pandemic here in the U.S. will end. Plus, the impact the pandemic has had on our kids what one study says schools should do to make up for lost learning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, the coronavirus remains a global health emergency, but there is hope the pandemic may be reaching an inflection point where higher levels of immunity can lower virus-related deaths, the director of the World Health Organization says that in the coming year, the world could transition to a new phase, which hospitalizations and deaths are reduced to the lowest levels possible. This comes as the White House is planning to end two COVID-19 emergency declarations in May. 
The original actions taken by the Trump administration provided funds and resources to several federal agencies to help them deal with the pandemic. Ending the declarations will mean the government will begin treating the virus as an endemic that is here to stay. And despite enduring the COVID-19 pandemic, the world is not ready for future outbreaks. Now that's according to a 2022 World Disasters Report published by the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. The IFRC is an humanitarian organization that provides support for global crises. The organization's report says much of the COVID-19 crisis's impact on countries could have been avoided. They add governments on federal, state, and local levels could have been more prepared for such an event and should do more to address the shortfalls. And a new study suggests school-aged children worldwide lost out on more than a third of a year's worth of learning when COVID-19 caused schools to close. Researchers looked at data from 42 studies on learning progress during the, the pandemic in 15 different countries. The author says students have still not recovered from the setbacks and suggests that school districts take steps to add tutoring and learning time, such as summer programs or longer school years, in an effort to get them back on track. Coming up on CBS 2 News, a Meridian man with warrants totaling half a million dollars, who police want you to be on the lookout for. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Of course, after three hours of FBI, you can join us right back here for CBS 2 News at 10. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the Nampa Fire Department taking longer to respond, the struggle to keep up with our state's growing population. Plus, officials in Oregon looking for a man accused of attempted murder, how they believe he's using social media to evade police and find new victims. And funeral services for Tyree Nichols set for tomorrow, a look at the aftermath after the video of his traffic stop is released. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning, folks. Thanks for waking up with CBS 2 News This Morning. We are sitting at 14 degrees right now in Boise. Winds out of the east southeast at 13 miles an hour, taking us to a feels like temperature of zero degrees, folks. It is very cold out there this morning. And make sure that if you are heading out the door this morning, you are bundling up. We're talking layers, no exposed skin, because this cold air is going to stick around for the day and into your work week. Temperatures right now in the teens for the Treasure Valley, just nine degrees. For our friends in CUNA, keep in mind that feels like temperature negative four up in McCall, 10 degrees in Mountain Home, 18 for our friends out in Ontario. Out the door this morning, it is frigid, folks. We are looking at just some clouds over the region. That is going to help us with a little insulation. Temperatures a few degrees warmer than yesterday, but not by much. So at 9 a.m., 16 degrees. By 11 a.m., 21 degrees are high today. Getting into the mid to upper 20s, folks. As you can see, those high temperatures across the region, some areas hitting 30 today, such as Caldwell and Emmett. Though our friends in the mountains looking at low 20s, some still staying in the teens for those daytime high. So today we are staying cold folks with cloud cover over the region. Again, that will help us be a few degrees warmer than we would without that cloud cover. But of course, it is going to be a chilly day it's coming up. We'll talk more about how long this cold Arctic air will stick around and when the warm up is on the way. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 632 this Tuesday morning, as you can see, starting to see some more headlights out there, but traffic moving along smoothly on your screen. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Well, in Nampa, the fire department says they're taking longer to respond to emergency calls. Compared to three years ago, it now takes Nampa Fire almost a minute longer for a unit to show up at an emergency. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains why that may be the difference between life and death. As more people make their way to the Treasure Valley, Nampa Fire says this poses an issue for its department. Traffic's just gotten worse. 
even running uh, code three with lights and sirens when you have this many cars on the road, it takes us longer to get there. Nampa Fire has seen response times to calls taking even longer. Last year, the department averaged seven minutes in 39 seconds. Is this a concern for you guys in terms of providing the care that you guys need to, yeah. to those individuals? It's definitely a concern because as soon as you uh, pass the six minute mark in, in a cardiac arrest type of situation, you're doing permanent damage. That number doesn't even include the time it takes for someone to talk to dispatch. We add on to that the dispatch time, which is anywhere from one to two minutes, kind of depends on time of day that that call comes in, what other calls are, are occurring at the time. And so we're just, worst case, say we're adding two minutes and all of a sudden that time is not 7.39, it's 9.39. The last time the department was able to achieve that six minute mark was around 2011 but the new fire station could help. We're opening station six in August of this year, and uh, we hope that will have a positive impact on our response times, or at least at bare minimum, keep them from getting longer. And the new fire station is on Roosevelt between Midland and Middleton, and the department will hire 12 more firefighters for that station. And Boise getting a new fire station five, construction will be starting soon. This is what the new Fire Station 5 will look like. The city says this new state-of-the-art facility will better serve the community and improve the health and safety of firefighters. Construction should be complete in 2024. Now in the meantime, Engine 5 will operate out of a location at 12th and Bannock. Ladder 5 will operate from Station 18. And Nampa Police need your help finding a man with warrants totaling a half a million dollars. 29-year-old Christian Arano of Meridian now in Nampa, police say he used to work for plumbing companies and preyed on seniors and customers who didn't speak or understand English. They say he would convince them to pay extra for things he either didn't do or that they didn't even need. Police think he did the same things in California and now plans to move to Utah. If you know where he is or you think he swindled you, you can head to our website to learn how to report him. And officials in Oregon searching for an attempted murder suspect Ben Foster is accused of torturing a woman that he held captive. He was already convicted in Nevada of keeping another woman in captivity. Police say he's using dating apps to find new victims and to find people to help him avoid getting arrested. He's a felon on the run. He doesn't want to go back to prison. He's probably willing to do anything to stay out of prison. Now they found Foster's car near one woman's house in the Wolf Creek area. They say canines helped track his scent, but they believe that someone else helped him out of the area. The Grants Pass Police Department is offering $2,500 for any information leading to Foster's arrest and prosecution. And turning now to developing news, the family of Tyree Nichols and their lawyer expected to speak at an event later today in Memphis. This comes after new fallout from the brutal police beating of the 29-year-old earlier this month. Memphis police now say two more officers are being disciplined following that encounter. And the city's fire department is firing three employees for their actions at the scene. Video shows that Nichols was not given medical attention for severe, several crucial minutes. He then died three days later. Everybody's walking around nonchalantly like it's business as usual. So it should be accountability for everybody on the video. Funeral services for Nichols will be held tomorrow. At the funeral, civil rights activist Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. Four Biden administration officials are expected to attend as well. And turning now to coverage at the Capitol, here at the Idaho State House, a bill is trying to remove student ID as a valid form of identification to vote. Under Representative Tina Lambert's bill, the only forms you could bring to the polls would be an Idaho driver's license or photo ID, a U.S. passport or other federal photo ID, a tribal photo ID, or a license to carry a concealed weapon issued by an Idaho county. It would also remove the option to sign an affidavit if a voter forgets to bring their ID to the polls. The bill needs a public hearing and vote in committee before it can move forward. And also at the State House, a bill that could punish cities that don't uphold state felonies advancing to the Senate floor. House Bill 22 passed the House floor 53 to 13. It states that if a local government entity, such as a police chief, mayor, or city council, does not investigate a felony, local sales and use tax could be withheld. The bill being met with both criticism and praise. Some saying it's directed at the city of Boise, which passed a resolution last summer saying it would not prioritize criminal investigations into abortions. 
The bill sponsor representative Bruce Scoggs says this is not the case. Next, it's expected to get several readings in the Idaho Senate. And it's time to snuggle up with a cup of cocoa. That's because today is National Hot Chocolate Day. Now, humans have been drinking chocolate for a long time. In fact, the first chocolate beverage believed to have been created over 2,000 years ago. So to celebrate, make some at home, or you can even stop by a coffee shop for a cup of hot cocoa. And of course, feel free to add whipped cream or marshmallows to top. Or both, you know. Yeah, yeah, get the best of both worlds. <laughs> no, definitely. And you're going to want something warm in your hands, folks, if you're stepping out the door this morning. Temperatures in the teens, as you can see, 18 for our friends in Ontario, 9 degrees in Mountain Home, though we are in the negatives for our friends up in McCall. As far as this next weather maker, we are looking dry, at least for the next few days. We are seeing high pressure over the region. That's what's keeping all of those storms at bay, but it's what's keeping our frigid temperatures on tap. We are expecting that once again today with more cloud cover than what we experienced yesterday that will help with some insulation helping with a few temp a few degrees warmer temperatures for our high today. We are also going to see gradual warming as we head through this week. But again, those dry conditions are staying um, off the coast. So folks, what we're seeing is high pressure off the Pacific. It's acting as a block for any storm systems that would potentially move into the region. Hence why we are staying dry, but also cold. We have a winter weather advisory for our friends on the eastern side of the state through Thursday at 11 p.m. An air stagnation advisory for this area you see in gray over eastern Oregon and southwestern Idaho. We will see decreasing air quality as we continue to see dense cold air begin to settle into those lower valleys, folks. And again, not looking at any meaningful storms to help push that out. We'll continue to see that pollution building. So today's forecast, 16 degrees at 9 a.m. By 10 a.m., 18 degrees. Then we get into the low 20s, looking at highs today into the mid to upper 20s. Pardon me. But as far as the next couple of days, we are going to be continue to climb. 29 on Tuesday, 34 on Wednesday, and then we finally get into the 40s and above average by the time we hit the weekend. So we have that to look forward to, folks, but as far as this morning, it is chilly out there. Again, we are in the teens, but we do have winds of about 10 miles an hour taking us down even further, so it's feeling like zero right now in Boise. Keep that in mind. Just make sure you have no exposed skin. You're bundling up the kiddos as you head them out the door. Definitely, especially with like you said, it feeling like zero degrees out mm. there. That is chilly. Definitely. These are northern Idaho temperatures. <laughs> so again, folks, just keep that in mind. We are going to see some warming, but the next couple mornings we will be in the teens. Good to hear. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. Still uh, not doing bad. There's a little bit of buildup kicking in. That is to be expected this time of the morning. If you're getting ready to get out the door, the uh, 7 o'clock hours when it gets busier, big time, gradually, especially 7.32.8. But a little bit of crowding right now, 84 in Meridian. That would be about it. And uh, non-freeway routes, checking out real quiet. Latest road closure kicked in yesterday in Nampa. Closure between uh, Cherry Lane and U-Stick on Franklin Boulevard, north-southbound route. Closed in both directions for the foreseeable future with construction there. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And it's time now for our question of the day. Today's question, the average person does this for at least a half hour a day. All right. Yeah, I know we've had some struggles with this one this morning. <laughs> See, I was thinking it would be eating, maybe maybe even just the act of like chewing. Oh, I chew a yeah. lot of gum too, so maybe that's, you know. Oh, yeah. Adds up maybe? That's a good one. Okay, what are you thinking? I think I'm going to stick with clean up after yourself. Yeah, no, it uh, definitely. I mean, as you're cleaning or as you're cooking, you clean as you get ready, you have to clean. Yeah, no, Ashley's very cleanly. It's something we enjoy about her. All right, Kimberly <laughs> says exercise. Oh, that's a good one. Supposed to get 30 minutes. Yeah, that's every a great single guess. day. Oh, Mike says blanks. Oh gosh. Now, now I'm going to be counting that, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I'm going to be very aware of how much I blink now. All right, Jacqueline says yawning. Oh, I do agree with that one. Yeah, hopefully not a yawning circle. You know, you get it started and then it goes to everybody else. <laughs> See, just the word yawn makes me want to yawn, but mm -hmm. I know that it 
you would yawn and yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, you can share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the future of the global economy may be doing better than expected. How much global growth is expected to fall? It's 645. Welcome back. Mountain Home today. Highs only reaching the mid-20s, mostly cloudy skies. That's going to hang on tonight. Overnight lows just 15 degrees. And tomorrow, see some slight warming with mostly cloudy skies, a high of 33 degrees. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the International Monetary Fund's latest report calls for a slight slowdown in global growth this year. However, the rate of decline forecast isn't as steep as some economists previously forecasted. John Lawrence reports. The International Monetary Fund says global growth will drop from 3.4% last year to 2.9% in 2023. This is the first time in quite a while that we've had sort of good news in that, in that sense. Although the rate is expected to fall half a percent, it's still higher than the 2.7% that was forecast in October. The IMF says China and India will provide the biggest boost for worldwide growth, while the U.S.'s rate of development is forecast to be 1.4 percent. This is not recession territory. I mean, actually, the labor market is doing very, very strongly right now. And while we're on the subject of the U.S. economy... Congress has gone for decades, both parties, on a spending spree. If the economy is as strong as President Biden claims, then now's the time to try to tighten the belt. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is scheduled to meet with President Joe Biden on Wednesday to address the U.S. reaching its $31.4 trillion debt limit. This comes after two dozen Senate Republicans sent a letter to Biden saying they won't back a debt ceiling increase without at least equal spending reductions imposed. The president's message for McCarthy and the GOP? Show me your budget, I'll show you mine. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And an important consumer alert this morning, the Rhode Island-based sausage company Danielle International recalling nearly 53,000 pounds of ready-to-eat products. They say they may be contaminated with listeria. The recalled meats sold nationwide include salami and pepperoni sold under several brand names as charcuterie platters. So far, luckily, no one has reported getting sick. All right, let's talk weather, folks, because another frigid morning is on tap. Yeah, but are these frigid mornings going to stick around as the week goes on? Well, we are going to be in the teens for the next couple of mornings, but then after that, we finally see some warming. We're going to break out of the teens, but starting your day today, folks, yeah, it is going to be cold. Make sure you are bundling up or getting the kids bundled as you're heading them out the door for the morning. 6 a.m., 14 degrees, 7 a.m., 16 degrees, and by 8 a.m., just 15 degrees. We are looking at increasing cloud cover today and a look outside this morning. We aren't seeing any precipitation on the horizon, folks. We are staying dry, but it is brutally cold out there. Temperatures negative four for our friends in McCall, just 14 in Boise, 13 in Caldwell, Nampa, sitting at 12 degrees, Mountain Home at 9 degrees, though Twin Falls is sitting at negative 2. So today it is going to remain cold in the teens, at least through the early morning hours, 15 at 8 a.m. By 9 a.m., 16. By 10 a.m., 18. Then we finally break into the 20s. Today highs only reaching the mid to upper 20s. So again, another cold day out there, folks. It's all because of this right here moving into our region, this cold Arctic air continuing to be pulled down from northern Canada. But as far as any storm systems, we are seeing high pressure off the coast. Normally, we'd be seeing storms moving out of the Gulf of Alaska into the region. This high pressure is instead blocking it, causing it to dissipate, and in turn, what's keeping us dry, but also what's opening us up to this very cold air continuing to push in. So our future cast looking at that cloud cover continuing to stream in folks. We are going to see mostly cloudy skies, partly cloudy for tomorrow as we see sunshine heading in to Thursday for your Groundhog Day. Let's talk about that as well. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Of course, Tuesday 27 today, we are going to see some slight warming, but by the time we hit the weekend is when we'll finally be back above average. Of course, Puxitani Phil will be able to see the light on sun or pardon me on that sunny day on Thursday as well. Let's take a look up at the mountains because it's still very cold folks. 20 degrees today. We'll see sunshine on Thursday for Groundhog's Day. Next storm system moving in on Sunday. So as far as this morning's commute, folks, again, it is looking clear, but it is very cold out there.
Yes, definitely want to bundle up with a layer two, maybe even three. Yes, no, it doesn't matter what you look like, folks, <laughs> as long as you are staying warm. <laughs> definitely. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 650 this Tuesday morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien from the News Talk Traffic Center for an update. We've got a little bit of buildup going on here and there, I-84, mainly Meridian, the uh, merge areas, of course, got uh, some brake lights coming on a little bit. Hasn't been bad through Nampa, and uh, really not that bad Meridian, but it's crowding up in routine fashion. Nothing major to get in the way if you're getting ready to get out the door. Cold, though, very cold start, uh, but uh, driving conditions fine, bare dry pavement, and uh, good to go. Even non-freeway routes are quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you get in the car and start your day, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, sustainable travel, how the industry is making sure they're taking care of the environment. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Sustainability is a hot topic right now in the travel world. Protecting the environment is the most common way that people associate it with the industry. But as CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from Los Cabos, Mexico, sustainability extends to many other areas. A drone helps snorkel tour leaders in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico spot schools of fish from above. In Cabo Pulmo National Park, 60 miles north of Los Cabos, sea lions and other marine life abound. Thanks to a ban on fishing and additional protections instituted almost three decades ago when almost all of the fish had disappeared. It is full of life. The fish found it and it is really the place that is representing what Jacques Cousteau once called the entire Sea of Cortez, the aquarium of the world. Many in the Los Cabos area are fixated on protecting the environment in and out of the water. In front of Gran Velas Resort, a beach cleaner and employees routinely sweep the sand, removing debris. When you walk on a beach in Los Cabos, you see a clear blue color on the ocean and clean brown sand. That's how we want to keep it. We stayed at Gran Velas and Hotel El Gonzo for special rates where art residencies and a community center are part of the sustainability initiatives. I think it's not just a matter of giving back to the communities, it's a matter of giving back something to the world. Sustainability is so important here. The Los Cabos Tourism Board has devised 10 rules for responsible tourists, including shopping at local businesses and not bargaining with owners. When you are making a sustainable impact in the community, you are helping to advance in the quality of life that everyone has. Laurence Jobiget recently visited Los Cabos with her family from Lexington, Kentucky. I've seen actually in the shops in Cabos, they just give like paper bags, which was quite interesting. A new survey from Expedia finds 90% of consumers are now looking for sustainable options when traveling. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Los Cabos, Mexico. A few other sustainability rules for tourists include managing your waste, learning and respecting the community's customs, and taking photos rather than removing anything from its natural environment. And a new hazard for first responders out on the road. Electric vehicle fires can be extremely difficult to put out. Sacramento Metro firefighters say gas-powered vehicles can usually be extinguished with the 700 gallons of water carried by one single fire engine. But electric vehicles use lithium-ion batteries that take a lot more effort. Firefighters say there's no standard response for this type of emergency, so they're learning something new each time. Well, it's time now for our question of the day. All right, that question. The average person does this for at least a half an hour a day. What is it? Well, that answer, Sarah got it right. You chew for a half hour a day on average. Oh, gosh. That's <laughs> good to know, I suppose, folks. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll see you right back here at 11 a.m. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. 
And watch for your next local newscast on CBS2 today at 11. Connect with CBS2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.